Hi, yes, it's the classic Sinclair C5. I'm finally getting back around to doing it. Why? Because, well, sadly, I uh, just heard the news today that Sir Clive Sinclair just passed away at the age of 81. Hats off to Sir Clive Sinclair for basically pioneering, uh, like, low-cost consumer electronic stuff started with uh, scientific calculators back in 1974 uh, just a couple of years after the HP 35 he developed the uh, basically a single chip um, Texas Instruments uh, cal scientific calculator for like a quarter of the price of the HP 35 at the time and well that was pioneering stuff and the TI engineers said it couldn't be done you couldn't use a little four banger uh, calculator chip that we've just released to turn it into a scientific calculator it hasn't got the memory just doesn't have the capability well Clive didn't agree and he thought you could make a scientific calculator affordable and make it using this single TI chip at the time and he did it, and that led on to uh, many Sinclair products, pocket TVs, and of course the classic Sinclair ZX80 and Sinclair ZX81 uh, computers, and a whole host of other stuff, including the classic Sinclair C5 that I'm sitting in now. He was going to revolutionise transport. Everyone was going to go to the shops, travel to work <laughs> with an electric motor. Um, you know, so technically, this is an electric car. It's a pedal-assisted electric car and I'll link in uh, the videos up here if you haven't seen it where I um, go on a ride around Sydney in some Sinclair C5s with uh, my ma mate Malcolm Fade who had uh, two of these things but I've got my own and well I always meant to do something with it but uh, I don't know it's just been sitting here in the bunker for I don't want to know how many years but anyway yeah, here it is. So anyway, it's not in very good nick, but I thought I'd uh, prop it up and uh, just, I don't know, start taking the thing apart and see what's what. So it's a little bit crusty, but maybe we can uh, restore this bad boy over time. That'll be the plan anyway. I think Sir Clive Sinclair would have liked that. It wasn't a hit. In fact, it was a bit of a joke. They had to install a huge flagpole on the thing so that uh, they didn't get uh, creamed by the cars, so that the cars could see them because uh, it was so low to the ground like this. But you've got to remember, this was the 80s, right? And uh, like <laughs> this thing, it, it did actually sell, but it just... It never really caught on. And if you're wondering what I'm holding here, these are actually the steering handles. You actually steer under your legs like this. And it's innovative in all sorts of ways. I mean, uh, Lotus even uh, designed, I believe they like you will work with Lotus on designing the, you know, the aerodynamic shape of it. Not that it got up to any speed or anything, but just, you know, designing the look and feel of the thing. But as with all uh, Sir Clive products, it's built down to a price. And that was his engineering philosophy. He came up with a price point first and then goes, right, let's meet that price point. Let's make a product that can hit that price point. And uh, yeah, this was, <laughs> it's pretty bare bones. And they are actually uh, fun to ride, believe it or not. But they're a bit slow, but you know, like you could actually put modern motors and stuff in this. And I, I think the idea of like steering under your legs is, is, is pretty innovative. I, I rather like it. And you know, pedal assist, you're in the recumbent position like this, which is a very efficient way to pedal and everything else. But anyway, in honor of Sir Clive, I'm doing another video here and well, let's prop it up and uh, have a squiz. Yeah, there's just uh, wires flapping around in the breeze everywhere here. Um, I think this one's been a bit hacked before I got to it. So anyway, let's take a squiz in honor of Sir Clive, shall we? Let's go. So let's start with just a quick look at the original condition of this thing and it's, well, at least the chassis is intact. Um, the like the big shell, which is the main thing uh, for this thing. It's a bit crusty, but you know that might uh, clean up. And the wires, I'm not sure how they were originally uh, going down. Did they go in the center of the shaft? Because they're just like cable tied on here. So there's a micro switch in there, and that's for your uh, acceleration. And yeah, it's looking a bit how you're doing. Uh, it's it's dirty. It's filthy. And the front's actually, it's not doing too bad. Like the original headlights in there, no idea if it works. The original decals are actually uh, still in reasonable nick. It's got a big chunk taken out of it here. But I'd have to say that the outer shell of this thing, it's uh, 
you know, it should restore up pretty well if you clean it up. And the side retro reflector uh, decals on there, they haven't uh, survived nearly as well. And it's still got the original wheels on there. Looks like there's a like a hubcap uh, missing on that. I'm not sure if they're the original tires or not. Apparently it still does go, but I've never actually had the motor actually going. But anyway, if you have a look in here, this is a concern. They've got some, <laughs> this is not part of the original build. There's some transistors uh, riveted to a, like just an aluminium bar, which is then riveted onto the side like that. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, you can see part of the, uh, oh, oh, that is, that's, I was gonna say, I thought that was fabric, that's metal. What on earth? I was gonna say, did it have a, like a seat belt or something? I don't know, it looks like a seat belt clip, but anyway, there's all sorts of stuff down in here, which is pretty hideous looking. Um, check it out, check out all this. Like this is just like flapping around in the breeze. I don't know what that does or where that's come from. Look, we've just got wires hanging out here, just like twisted together. I like, it's like, it needs a complete rewire this thing. So this is, you know, probably some uh, aftermarket hack. This is, I'm pretty sure that's not original stuff. And something's been hacked onto here. Was that this uh, switch? I don't know what the deal is. Um, yeah, but that's that's kind of ruined it. So you want to file off those and bog it, maybe bog it back up. And, and there's the back of it. Looks in pretty good nick. I kind of, it's kind of almost futuristic looking from the back. <laughs> you can see how this would have been pretty funky for the 1980s. Anyway, let's go into the boot here. Got ourselves a crusty spare wheel. I don't know if that's uh, an original. So that's certainly different to uh, the front wheel that we've got on there at the moment. Um, and I've got the original, original C5 charger. There it is. The original sink. <laughs> that just looks ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's functional and it's almost certainly built down to a price. And yeah, just uh, chuck those on your 12 volt battery. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Actually, that's the original rubber that would have gone over the handlebars in there. They would have covered up the wiring and crap like that. So, yep, but that's, uh, that's no good anymore. Oh, there we go. There's our lost uh, hubcap cover. And what's that? Warning, live, wire, <laughs> live wires inside, disconnect. <laughs> but anyway, you can see it's just like a corrugated um, plastic. I don't know what the name is, but you know, cardboard-like corrugated cardboard-like material. And the whole idea is that you put your shopping in there or your whatnot. Um, I guess 1980s, you know, you could put your laptop in there or something like that. You know, you could put your Tandy 100 in there and, you know, your lunch and that's it. You head off to work and you Sinclair C5s. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Come on. It, it, like, this has to make a comeback. There she is up on blocks. Isn't she a beauty? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Bobby Dazzler. You can see this would have looked awesome on paper and it, it does kind of look awesome in real life. It's just like the practicality of the thing. I mean, if everyone had one of these and it had modern motors, modern batteries, you know, modern speed and everything else, and you didn't have to worry about cars on the road and stuff, you could totally see this being a thing and making a, you know, an 80s retro comeback. Come on, tell me you don't love it. And yes, by the way, if I need any spare parts, I've got them all the way up there, including the couch feet. I can add couch feet. First, world's first Sinclair C5 couch feet modification. Ah, oh, beautiful. There's your front wheel. It still goes. It needs a pump up. Uh, the tire's a bit crusty, but uh, it's still got full tread, so it's hardly had any use. There's the wheel again. It's a bit rusty. Tire's made in Taiwan. There's your caliper. Brakes, of course, up in there. There's your rod that steers it in there like that. Still works. It's cobwebs in there, but you know, I did like, <laughs> no worries. Put some WD-40 on it, she'll be right. The bottom has seen a few scrapes, but it's still intact. And uh, if we go over here to the business end, you can see that there's a bit of rust on the chassis there. That's not too much. That'll, actually, that'll just, that'll just clean off, I think. But, I don't know, the joint down in there, any rust experts, let us know. Uh, 
yeah, I don't know, oh, has that been eaten away? I'm not sure, it uh, doesn't look in good health. There's our rear wheel, and that looks like our brake. I don't know how that actually works in there. There's our controller, all of our wiring, but check it out. I mean, it's just like, like twisted here on the bottom. Um, somebody's just been having a Harry Hacker with this thing. Seen better days, and the motor on this bad boy, there it is there. Apparently, it does still work, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to upgrade this, you'd put like a front hub motor on it, or you would manufacture a motor that uh, drives the, rear, the uh, rear wheels, but then you'd have to do some engineering for that, whereas the front hub motor, I presume, would be easier. But anyway, there's our pedal gear. So all the, all the chain's still intact. It's pretty tight, and uh, yeah, like I have actually pedaled this thing around, and it does go if you pump up the tyres. And there's the steering linkage there that comes through from the handlebars under your legs and uh, you know it all feels tight and all looks and all feels pretty good the main chassis arm isn't buckled in any way although as you can see it has actually and uh, yeah i think these were welded together yeah and those bits in there have just completely peeled away and just broken off uh, is it like wishbone i guess um that'd be the name for it the rear wishbone and it, like it might be a little bit bent or something, but chassis is intact, but yeah, um, it's a fair bit of work to do. And there's your futuristic lead indicators. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> like two lead bar graphs. I think one is like uh, power and one is uh, battery level or charging or whatnot. So yeah, <laughs> that'll have its own uh, PCB. I think there's a uh, ULA in there, an uncommitted uh, logic array, like a uh, PLD type thing to drive that. But there's the pedals and the uh, teeth on that drive train is, um, yeah, it's cracked off at the top, but it's still intact. The belt's still intact. The teeth are still there. Um, so yeah, it, it would go, but yeah, if you're going to restore this thing, unless you're a, like a uh, purist, you wouldn't uh, run on the original motor. I mean, motor technology these days, and of course you wouldn't run on the, uh, what was it, like just using SLA, sealed lead acid battery back in the day, wouldn't it? You know, you would put in modern battery and motor drive technology for sure. Like, it's just the look and feel that you want, really. So let's start taking this apart, shall we? Start with the wheels, I guess. So... That should just pop off, right? I don't know. There, there is a big, like, exploded assembly guide for this thing. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Hey, look at that. Oh, yeah, the shaft looks in good nick. Yeah, that shaft there. That looks and feels in good nick. So, yeah, you don't want that to be stripped. There's the motor drive. And that all, that all looks pretty good, actually. That's, oh, our wheel support thing. It kind of just pulls off there. These two are broken off, I'm sure. Yeah, that is, that's definitely broken off. There's no way it's supposed to be like that. So it's a bit how you're doing. But we do have quite a few washers here. Geez, there's three. Three smaller washers and one bigger washer there. It does all turn. It all works. Um, this is all one big, like, nylon clamp for, the, for holding the motor in there. So that's rather, rather interesting. Don't know what, you know, what type or grade, but it feels like nylon-y. This wheel, though, I'm not sure what the deal is, because that is not the same 5 8 um, nut that's on the other one. So, don't know if that's, if it's supposed to be like that, or whether or not somebody's had another Harry Hacker. So, let's try an 11th, 11 16th. Yep, that works. So now, that is turning the pedals. So, um, yeah, got to stop that. All right, so I have to hold down the pedals, and that is now coming off. Yeah, beauty. Got it. Got some original Sinclair grease there, do we? All the way from the factory in the old dart. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And we're off. And, uh... Yeah, all the thread, everything else, it all looks in good nick. Well, you know, <laughs> relatively. Ugh, I'm going to get this crap all over my camera. Here's your original wheel, and uh, 
that would have been part of the uh, break-in, whereas the front one had uh, your old school calipers. Now, I do actually recall from uh, riding these things that, yeah, if you apply the rear brake, um, then you did kind of tend to go to one side because it's only on one wheel on one side. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not the best design. It's like everything's built down to a price. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's the serial number for those playing along at home, 100502. I'm not sure how that, uh, what that means in the scheme of things. Manufactured by Hoover on behalf of Sinclair. Unbelievable. <laughs> so yeah, I guess this bad boy was, uh, was actually uh, manufactured in the Hoover factory. Sorry, I haven't done my research uh, before I uh, <laughs> did this video. But yeah, you know, Sir Clive Sinclair had such a big name back then, he could just go to Hoover and say, can you manufacture me an electric car? And Hoover went, yeah, all right, no worries. And for those who don't know, Hoover, they make Hoovers. You can see the pads on there like that. You can actually see the, uh, the water, you know, water marks on there as well. And if I engage, you can see them. That just pushes the pads out slightly on the inside of the drum on that wheel. So that just fits in there and squeezes on the uh, inside wall of the wheel. No idea of the proper procedure for taking this thing apart, but we'll get the, oh geez, that's, that's crusty as, wow, yeah, <laughs> we'll get the pedals off. The, I know that the uh, whole chassis ain't going to lift off unless we get the pedals off, that's for sure. Oh, no, I'm going to have to take the, there's a shell on here. There we go, you can see inside the whole uh, front cog now, and chain assembly. <laughs> filled with original cobwebs. Look at that. Factory. Mmm. More crusty burger. Look at this. <laughs> I presume that this giant screw in here has something to do with keeping the chassis on. I, yeah, I don't think there's actually much keeping the chassis on. And, like, you don't want to stand in the bottom of this thing because it does feel a bit flimsy, like you wouldn't want to be a real heavyweight and put, like, and stand up in the, in the bottom of the, bottom of the shell. Oh yeah, it's not a self-tapper. There you go. So that's holding in, I'm sure, the top chassis, or at least part of it. I don't know about the shaft, because you can't just lift it off with that shaft in place. And yeah, it looks to be identical screw down in there as well. And then the, uh, Handlebars as well, and ta-da, way! look at that. That's a long sucker. That's what she said. Yeah, I'm going to have to get the, uh, the caliper cables and stuff like that off. You might be better off getting the caliper cables out from the back and pulling them through, maybe. I don't know. Got to think about that. And there's the uh, rear part of that wishbone in there. And this... Some sort of rubber cap there that's, I guess, um, that's just a pressure, I guess, from the seat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, your pressure from your bum goes on there, and then it just rests via that rubber baby buggy bumper onto the rear part of the chassis there. Anyway, I am running out of battery, and I didn't bring a spare one. Um, yeah, I think I've got a dodgy battery here. It was full when I put it in, and usually that'll give me hours and hours of recording, but uh, it's dropped down to 4%. I think she's dodgy as this battery. Um, normally I get like four, five out, four hours solid, like solid recording out of a full large battery on this puppy, but nope, not today. So gonna have to call it quits today, but there you go. I hope you uh, liked uh, sort of a start of the teardown of this Sinclair C5. Finally got around to it um, in honor of Sir Clive Sinclair. So if you've got a good Sir Clive Sinclair story about the Sinclair, any of the Sinclair products, please leave it in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed that video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want me to continue restoring this thing, <laughs> definitely give it two thumbs up. Not that you can, but you know, engage and all that sort of stuff. Catch you next time. Hello.